Today, we are back on the podcast, and I'm very excited because we are sitting with a very long-standing guest and also a previous host on the podcast, Ashley Piggott of Ashley Piggott Events. Welcome back to the podcast. Nice to see you again. Oh my goodness, it feels so good to be back. It has been a really, really long time since I have been on the VIP, and I'm glad to be back. Feels good. It's, it Thanks is. Nice to see you. And I can't believe it was, I believe it was February we had you back on or when you were hosting. Yeah. Seems like so, a whole lifetime ago. Yeah. And a lot has happened since then because we had quite the season in the wedding industry. And what we are going to talk about today is really kind of what we learned from the 2021 season and what we learned from intimate weddings, what you learned on the planning side of things, because I think, um, you know, the main theme going around our industry is just things really changed and they changed quick. And a lot was coming at planners and a lot of rules and regulations changing fast. So there was a lot of stuff you had to take in and today we're just going to go over some of the things that you noticed and some of the advice you would give moving into 2022 and uh, helping people who are going to move forward next year so oh we learned so much <laughs> I feel like we've lived like multiple lifetimes um, over the course of the last what four or five months it was fast and furious and it was chaotic and crazy it was amazing and magical and like all those things all wrapped into one it's sort of hard to sort of articulate what it mm -hmm. felt like to live it. Mm -hmm. um, but it certainly feels like we have, you know, sort of come leaps and bounds since June when things sort of really started to open up for us here in Ontario. Yeah, it really wasn't your typical season at all. And I think a lot of it was just so much fluctuation between the restrictions of you can have 10 people, you can, it just kept growing the restrictions mm -hmm. of how many people you could have. So it was 10, then it was 50, then it was 100, and it just kind of kept moving that needle. And so with that, a lot of the clients wanted to move the needle with their wedding and, you know, invite the people they originally wanted and those kind of things. So for you guys, and I know I heard a lot that, you know, sleep wasn't really a thing that happened this summer. No, <laughs> so not even close. Not at all. No doubt. So hats off to you. And uh, fortunately, we had the opportunity to work on a couple weddings and we actually have a couple more coming up. So yes. it was really fun to be on site with you and your team and watch you guys execute the magic that you did because you always do. And it was it was beautiful. A couple of days that we'll get into as well was yes. some of the cool things that happened. But yes. what do you think, <clears throat> like even starting from the beginning, what was one of the main things that you saw happen that either was kind of a challenge on this end of what you saw coming out of or going into 2021 like what was <laughs> it was so hard because honestly like no one could have prepared for what hit us like we were basically wound up ready to go you know starting in you know may when that first announcement came out um giving us sort of a roadmap to what might have been coming in those like three week intervals that we were sort of outlined and you know we were preparing but nobody could have prepared for it opening up so quickly mm. and going from weddings of 10 and then 25 right to 100 people or more if you were at a venue and you were outside and you know really keeping track of the ever-changing regulations that were coming out and seemed to always come at like friday afternoon mm -hmm. um you know late Very in the day stressful. when no one was really prepared for it it would come out um and then it was a scramble right an absolute scramble so i definitely learned how quickly we can jump <laughs> when we need to mm -hmm. and how quickly things can come together. Not that we ever want to be in a two to three week timeline to plan an entire wedding, which we normally would have done in eight to 10 months. It can happen um, if everyone's sort of rallying and ready to make quick decisions and, you know, rolling with it, keeping track of their priorities, what was really important to them. Like there was just so much that came at us so quickly and keeping that all in check for not only our couples, but for the entire vendor team and knowing what we can do and what we can't do because not everybody was watching CP24 mm -hmm. 24 seven, like we mm -hmm. were to make sure that we knew what was happening all the time and checking mm -hmm. those websites every single day. You know, I'd pour my coffee in the morning, I'd scroll down to the bottom of the government regulation, um, you know, the Reopen Ontario Act, which is a ridiculously long um, set of rules but I'd quickly scroll to the bottom of the page first thing every morning to see the mm -hmm. published date. So I would know, did something change? Cause not everything got announced on the news either. So right. it, there was a lot of intricacies of making sure that we knew what we were doing and following the rules. And at the beginning of the summer, 
there was a lot of fear involved in ensuring you were doing everything the right way, not only for us as planners and vendors as a community, but our clients as well. Most of these events had been moved to private properties because you know, a lot of people felt like that was the right thing to do last year, uh, being outside, being out of the Toronto region when we were still dealing with region to region and color coded systems. Like a lot of that happened mm -hmm. over the winter before these new sets of rules came into place. So for that reason, a lot of people felt that they really needed to be on top of their game and making sure that they were doing everything the right way, because all it took was a bitter Betty maybe neighbor who was right. cranky to call 311 and your entire right. wedding was shut down because they felt that there were too many people and didn't necessarily know that you were exactly 25 on the nose, you know, right. or, you know, making sure that you were doing everything you could. So there were just so many challenges, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure where to start. Um, well, the amazing what I thing was that we, we did make it through, which is, feels really good now in November. <laughs> what do you think it looks like when it was you could have 25 people and then say your client called and wanted to increase it to 50 or to 75? So on the back end, that, all, that obviously means more mm -hmm. chairs, more mm -hmm, table mm -hmm. space, redoing the floor plan. So when you say redoing a wedding within a two to three week timeline, that's kind of what you mean is that you're essentially have to restructure what it looks like some of them right? yeah so like in july i had a number of weddings in july when this it actually went from 25 up to 100 um which was a big jump a really mm -hmm. really big jump amazing for our clients who were mm -hmm. having these tented mm -hmm. weddings and who originally had planned you know one of our podcasts we did when i was doing the takeover was about making these beautiful intimate dinner party style mm -hmm. weddings that's what was planned. And then all of a sudden on Friday, uh, you know, an announcement's made and it says, well, you can go up to a hundred people at a private property. So these weddings went from 25 person dinner parties to full on hundred person weddings. Like I, like two weeks out, I want a band. I want, uh, I want a cake now. I want a full on dance party. Like they, these things were things that were within reach and obviously we wanted to make that happen for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we were bending over backwards and doing everything we could on the behind the scenes side of things to make that happen. And, you know, some of them were earlier on in the season where the pivot was really, so for example, we had an island wedding up in Muskoka at the very beginning of July, where we were essentially hosting two full weddings for 25 people each on two separate properties on an island side by side hmm. because you could only have 25 people on your property so we had two properties and two weddings for 25 people one was the family one was the bridal party and their friends and the bride and groom were being shuttled back and forth across this island no way um, <laughs> to host their guests like we had to get creative in order wow. to make these things happen okay. and then two weeks later you know this 25 person wedding became a hundred person wedding on their property and you're right it's not just floor plans and rentals, it's food and beverage. It was an essential thing to make sure that we sort of planned and prepared accordingly because the labor shortage was epic in July mm -hmm. and August. There weren't enough servers, there weren't enough bartenders, there weren't enough truck drivers to drive around our rentals or even ones in the warehouse, people to, to pull these rentals to get them on site for us. So it, um, it, it was so many moving pieces to sort of bring those all together, not just, um, planning but just all of the intricate back of house behind the scenes pieces that nobody really ever thinks about but are yeah. so integral in making these events come to life because if you can't get a chair to your wedding for dinner <laughs> for dinner you know that's you know we want to say yes but if we couldn't get it to you for the most part I think it did happen and everyone pulled it together but it was definitely tough it was it was full on dinner party plans into full on pre COVID style weddings. Obviously there were COVID pieces that were put into play, but in the grand mm -hmm. scheme of things, like that's what the expectation was. Mm -hmm. We're opening up. We want a wedding. Yep. And I we think that's why, open. that's why I want to, sh yeah. And that's why I want to shine some light on this just because a lot of times the behind the scenes, when you're so professional and you hire the professionals, you don't see exactly kind of what goes into that. And so I think it's important to just highlight how hard you guys actually work on making sure that you can deliver. And I think that we saw a lot of collaboration in the industry within the city. 
and everyone kind of pulling together and seeing where they could get specific pieces from to make that dream wedding for their clients. And I think that was a really cool thing that happened within our within our industry is everyone really pulling together to help each other. Totally. Well, you know that I'm like so team player, like that's mm-hmm. just how I roll and I love it. And it was amazing to see everyone rally, you know, like planners from other companies, helping planners, florists, helping other florists with inventory and labor and, you know, all of these things to sort of make this stuff happen. It was behind the scenes, like it was chaos. And mm-hmm. we really tried to shelter, like our job is to shelter our clients from the stress. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think for the most part, we did a really good job of sheltering them from the things that they couldn't have controlled otherwise. Like they were stressed about whether or not their grandmother was gonna be able to come, whether or not they were gonna be able to invite their friends, whether their overseas guests would be able to make it. Um, you know, all of these pieces were things that they were very much stressed about. And there's only so much that we could do to really support some of those pieces because they were out of our control. Mm-hmm. But what we could do was manage everything else, um, pull it together, make things happen. And it was a lot of all nighters. It was a lot of tears. If I can be totally truthful, it was a lot of stress. It was a lot of calling friends in the industry like i need this like where can i get this how you know people jumping in to rally and help and make this stuff happen all for the greater good mm-hmm. was really amazing to see and you know you look back now in november and i joke that like we have full on ptsd over 2021 because right. even just thinking about july makes me feel so anxious and august it was just such a crazy time and things were coming at us just it was nuts um, but thinking about it now and sort of looking back, I think about what my team was able to execute this year, you know, back to back tented Muskoka out of town weddings with like really intense logistics, lots of production, lots of moving pieces. Mm-hmm. And we had incredible experiences. Like our clients had the most amazing weddings and we had the most amazing time putting it together. And it was definitely, you know, not a season for the faint of heart for sure. Mm-hmm. Like this was not a season, um, of rest or any type of downtime, you know, I, I joke, but like, I really didn't see my family for about three months or speak to my family, um, for a good solid chunk of the season. But it it really was amazing to see it all come together and watch everyone sort of jump in and and help each other and, and see it all come together. It was pretty amazing to be a part of, to be honest. Some of these weddings that we were lucky enough to be a part of, like some of these weddings were eight to 10 people. And I was a part of that. Like it felt amazing to be in that environment and feel that kind of love that was happening. Um, Those are things that I don't think we ever had pre COVID on a regular basis. It just wasn't necessarily the vibe overall that the majority of the weddings had. And I think this year that was like a staple across the board. Mm -hmm. Everyone had that level of intimacy because of the controlled guest list, the smaller groups sort of having to handpick who was coming um it really just allowed for these like wonderful like gushy lovey feelings that just like make everyone feel good and even as us as people who are not intertwined into these family dynamics like there were like I'm not a crier um I mean 2021 I'm a crier because like it's been a lot but like there were times where I got choked up and thought like this is pretty special that we're here and we get to be a part of this experience that these people are having at the first time, you know, brides had hugged their grandmothers Mm -hmm. and being there to see that, like it was, it was really special. Um, and I think that that is something that we wouldn't have necessarily ever had if COVID hadn't been a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it just, obviously you'd never really be able to capture that. Yeah. And I think you can capture it because you're good at that. (laughs) I think, but I think that's something too. Um, when it comes to like we also saw a nine person wedding at a cottage this summer and it was just so intimate we saw uh, grandfathers being the officiant for their wedding we that. saw choreographed dances that and in this intimate setting it was you know it was a surprise choreographed dance so the father da- father daughter were dancing and it was everyone was you know kind of gushy eyed and then all of a sudden they broke out into some kind of like hip hop dance and so there was just a little bit of people kind of playing around a little bit more with this intimate style and maybe it's because they felt more comfortable because it was closer family and friends in a sense so there was kind of those aspects what are some of the things that you saw this summer that were a little bit different from anything else what else what did you execute so much was different um I mean there were so many things I think the biggest difference in 2021 
one for us, or even in the last couple of months, was probably integrating more of like the digital space into wedding planning. We were dealing with live streams Mm -hmm. almost every weekend. We were dealing with, you know, digital platforms for invitations and RSVPs and sort of that piece of things where we very much lived in a paper world before. Like that was Mm -hmm. sort of the formalities. You did, you know, paper invitations. Um, We had a mix of them, but mostly RSVPs were all digital. Like we just didn't have the time. So we had to really lean into that space. Um, We also did a hologram of a bridesmaid who we did so we were there it. and we were, we were there, there. <laughs> so I don't know if you're going to show any of that and I don't know if you want to go into that now but you know we really sort of got thrown into finding ways to connect people who couldn't otherwise be there and um that was a really interesting wedding to be a part of and that was so like a that was a five day lead time so I'll let you maybe sort of set the stage on that one well basically I I would like to know on the back end because we had discussed with um, they had hired another team to come in who specializes in holograms, which essentially is having someone in a different studio who's projected onto a screen and they're there in live time. Essentially. But they look 3D like it doesn't they look, look like they're on a screen. It looks 3D. like a human That's illuminated right. figure. That's right. And it's full size human. Yeah. Like, like life-size. Life-size life human, exactly. So what exactly, like how much lead time went into that? Was that a last, that was five last days. Last minute, that was five days. So we, so we had a bride, um, lovely. We absolutely loved working with the couple in general, yeah. but we had a bride whose best friend, one of her bridesmaids was in the UK. And based on the timing of sort of international travel, she wasn't going to be able to make the wedding. We were like off by, I think, 10 days or something like that from her being able to. We tried every possible loophole to try and get her here. And ultimately our groom, it's like the loveliest and so sweet. He basically got an idea to see if we could do this. And so what he did is he reached out to a company via LinkedIn, basically sent every single person who worked for this company, a direct message on LinkedIn. I'm not on LinkedIn, so I don't really know how it works, but contacted them all um, in hopes that they could help. So, you know, the wedding's on Saturday, Monday morning, 930. I'm on a conference call with a hologram company trying to figure out how we can make this work. Now, it seems like, again, you know, you've got the company, you can set it up, but you know, there's a lot of logistics behind hologramming. Like it needs to be completely dark. Well, we were outside, we were in a tent. You know, Mm. we didn't have the control of these things. So it was sort of redesigning a floor plan so that we could find a way to get this black velvet draped box in my beautiful pink blush wedding Mm -hmm. uh, without our bride knowing because it was a total surprise for her. So she had no idea that, you know, five days leading up to her wedding, you know, we're we're having conference calls with the UK and, you know, they're based out of the States, like just trying to figure this all out. Um, Ultimately, we did. It was amazing. She had no idea it was happening. Um, but the bridesmaid was at a studio in the UK at like three o'clock in the morning. It was about 10 o'clock in Niagara and um, the groom, they had their first dance and then he walked her over to an area near the bar and sort of started to describe that he had this one more surprise for her and poof. In comes our bridesmaid, um, sort of being hologrammed in to give a live speech at the wedding mm-hmm. and uh, wish them well. So they were actually able to communicate. They were, she had a microphone, uh, like our bride did, so she could actually speak to our bridesmaid and they could have a back and forth dialogue. It was very cool. It was very stressful. You know, we were dealing with Wi Fi signals and, you know, you're close to the States in Niagara. So you get into like roaming and it was, it was, intense uh for sure even just the week leading up to it trying to figure out how to make this all work and like where to get it we were dealing with weather we were dining al fresco in a vineyard but our rain plan was inside the tent so if it rained we actually couldn't have done the hologram because i didn't have a footprint to be able to give them tents were very hard to come by this summer if you hadn't booked one you basically weren't getting one so you know extending the tent and making it bigger wasn't an option it was logistically really challenging but seeing her face light up when she saw like and the guests were like what just happened like how did this happen um it it was quite an endeavor but uh it went off really really well yeah you pulled it off seamlessly and everything just worked and 
to add to that, the bridesmaid that was in the UK actually had a camera and she could see the yes. bride as well. Yes. So it was really like they were there having- There was a live a cam, yeah, that was on the couple. So she was actually seeing this all go down. She was actually yeah. watching him announce the surprise, right. like waiting for our bride to sort of clue in like what's happening like she was I don't know if she thought that she was going to show up in person or what but it was uh like surprises are fun right especially when they come together so well even with all the stress it's really interesting and that one hit the airwaves and that was all over the news Fox News it was in the states and it It really really kind of went viral in its own sense of you know the fact that I think it was the first wedding to have done that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in maybe North America. So I'm interested to see how many will jump on that and, you know, do something similar. But it's definitely, like you said, not for the faint of heart. (laughs) It's like, it was just, you know, one of those, and we had lots of them. Almost every single wedding had one like crazy challenge, Mm -hmm. Um, if not many, but at least like one really tough challenge, whether it was weather, like we had a really rough season for weather this year on top of everything we were dealing with, basically Mm -hmm. it rained for the entire month of July. Mm -hmm. And then August was, you know, 40 degrees plus every single weekend. So aside from sort of general challenges of planning with COVID, which were obviously plentiful, you know, the weather was also a challenge. Like there were just so many things thrown at us this year that, you know, like I said, I don't even know where to start. There were so many, my list is so long. I closed my list on my phone because like, there's just so many, I don't know how many we'll get to, but. um, But I think that's one of the biggest benefits, you know, and having a planner is just that you, like you said, like the, the couple has their own challenges they have to face that you guys there is only so much that you guys can help with because you really can't control certain regulations of who can come in the country and those kind of traveling restrictions so on the back end you guys are we can execute this event for you and this is what we can do and I think it's just there's so much value in what you what you do and I know I say it so much but I have so much respect for this profession because it's just it's it's challenging and especially when you throw something like COVID on top of it Um, totally it's been a tough like 18 months um you know it just seems like this ever evolving sort of train of challenges like with the first round of postponements and then you know last year with the same thing and then sort of coming up with creative ways because people did want to celebrate in 2021 so i had a full season of weddings Mm -hmm. we did 16 weddings this summer Mm -hmm. um which is way more than we would normally ever do and it's going to be the same thing next year um because people didn't want to postpone this year they really didn't we had a handful of people who postponed for sure that moved out which were sort of like the og 2021s Mm -hmm. but the people who had already postponed a year like they weren't postponing again they wanted to go ahead and they wanted to do it so you spent sort of january february march getting creative selling this concept of this like dinner party wedding and sort of coming up with these beautiful ideas for them and then it all went out the window like some of these weddings we planned four or five six times in various different um capacities of what they could look like right and you know I really feel for any of the couples who went through all of this without a support team, like without Mm -hmm. a planner or somebody to sort of help guide you through it, Mm -hmm. because it was really hard for us. Mm -hmm. So I really actually can't imagine what it was like for those who had to go through it on their own. And and hopefully that they did have support in the vendors that they had on their team to help them through it, because it wasn't easy. And there was really no roadmap. There was no this is how we do it. There was like, there was no answer. It was really sink or swim, like figure it out. Everything was trial and error. And as we sort of went through the season and luckily we did start our season so early in July that by the time we got into August, when a lot of people were sort of just ramping up, we had sort of figured out a couple of really great systems um, that worked really well to help execute and sort of move things along. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it, it was a, it was a tough one. You had mentioned about sourcing like some of the tents it was hard to find and come across this year. Do you think moving into next year, like if people are choosing to go the tent route, you kind of have to make that decision and stick with it, I would assume. But do you think like at what point do you start reaching out to these companies and saying, okay, like what kind of window do you think people could have into 2022? So the interesting thing that's happening in 2022 right now is... um, the opposite of what was happening in 2021. 2021, nobody really wanted to lock anything in because we had no idea what 2021 was going to look like. 
Um, you know, people didn't want to sign rental contracts for furniture or even sign up for their tents or what size they were booking because just everyone felt very unsure about right. what was going to happen in 2021. The exact opposite is happening for 2022, where everyone has this very secure sense of confidence that 2022 is like our comeback. And things that we would normally be planning in sort of Jan, Feb, March, we're now doing October, November, December. We are definitely ahead of where we would normally be because there's a massive amount of weddings that are happening next year. There's a really big supply and demand problem that will mm. sort of be coming at us in 2022. Okay. Um, Cause everybody wants to get married. Everyone feels good about it. They want to sign. There are dates that, you know, some vendors are completely like some, vendors are completely sold out for the year already mm -hmm. um, where we normally would have had sort of that January influx of engagements to fill in the rest of the season it's going to be challenging this year so like if you want a tent like you need to book your tent immediately mm. um you know anything that you know you want my advice is just book it um you might as well because the longer you wait maybe the less likely you are that you're going to get your top choice mm. um with that said I think that like there's no reason to panic which we are certainly seeing um mm. there is definitely a sense of urgency right now where you know it doesn't help with these like memes and and infographic things that get shared on instagram talking about like all the weddings and the wedding boom mm. and like all this stuff that's going to happen there are really amazing vendors it doesn't necessarily have to be you know the one or two that you really covet on instagram there are lots of options out there so i would mm -hmm. say like there's no need to panic, but don't delay. If there is something you know you want, go and get it and book it and secure it and sign a contract for it. Um, if you're still unsure, then you know speak to someone who can help guide you through that. But definitely, you know, I would say, yeah, any of your big ticket items, if you've got a wish list, now would definitely be the time. And I think even leading into 2022, still really reading through the contracts because an understanding what you're signing on for right and just having that peace of mind that you've read through kind of what restrictions are for for yourself and for your for your family and your, and your uh, fiance yeah i mean that's one thing that i think hopefully everyone takes with them like moving forward forever is read your contracts like understand what you're signing on for we definitely had a lot of unfortunate discussions over the last 18 months which nobody likes to have but the contract is mutual it's not one-sided and if you feel like it's one-sided then have a conversation before you sign it because mm -hmm. you are both agreeing to the terms that are in there and when something happens that you don't think was ever going to be a problem you were going to have to deal with and then mm -hmm. you don't like those terms like that's not really fair to everybody involved um you really do need to understand what you're committing to um but yeah yeah, I think that's what we saw. Just something, something new comes into play, and we all have to kind of, you know, rewire how we how we see things, how we structure things, um, sure. and really pay attention to that. So, mm -hmm. fantastic. And what is one last piece of advice that you can leave us with for anyone moving oh into my next God, year? So much I know advice. there's so much. There's <laughs> Give so us much one advice. of your favorite um, pieces. Oh my goodness. Okay, so uh, 2022, be decisive is definitely one that needs to roll into play. 2022 is not the year to dilly dally on, I don't know what I want. I want to shop around. Mm. It's not the world we're going to be living in in 2022. It's just not, um, unless you're okay with losing your first and second and third choice, because in the time that you sort of review a quote, sit on it, chat about it, question it, source other options, your first option is probably gone. Mm -hmm. So I would say, um, especially for sort of those main categories and those big ticket items, I think, you know, be decisive um, as best as you possibly can. You know, my um, record player advice is always like hire the right team. It's like so valuable. You can't ever even imagine anybody who got married last year or this year, have a conversation with them because they'll mm -hmm. tell you how valuable their team was. Um, in supporting them, especially anyone who lived through 2021. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you hire them, trust them. Love it. It's probably like the biggest piece of advice. Hire mm -hmm. the right team and then trust them to do their job because after this year, um, we all are really amazing at what we do. 
And <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. And communication. So if totally. for some reason you're going to change a date, if you don't have a planner on your side, make sure you're communicating with all your vendors if you yeah. choose to move forward with the date before you move forward with the date to make sure yeah. that everyone's available because that can get a little bit sticky as well. And there are so many weekends um, in the summer. So if you want to make sure you <laughs> have everyone on board with the team that you love and trust, make sure they're available as well. I hope no one's moving their weddings anymore, though. Like, I really hope. Right. I really absolutely. Hope Fingers are crossed. That. Yeah. I no, really, absolutely. really do. Yeah. But if that is the case, just make sure you're always in communication with everyone. Right? Communication is key. Especially in the world of weddings. Key baseline of every relationship you bet well it's been such a pleasure to sit with you again thank you for bringing some knowledge and for filling us in on what you saw this summer and what kind of went on behind the scenes oh my goodness thank you for having me it's nice to sort of spill the tea i think you know most people don't really realize what was going on behind the scenes which is what we wanted like we wanted our Mm -hmm. clients to feel like supported and that people were working for them um but i don't think anybody really knows like some were full on 24 hours with like nonstop and like not consuming food or water for like an entire day because we couldn't get away from our desk. Oh my goodness. It was was crazy. But um, yeah, no, I definitely think that, you know, we all survived. I saw some incredible collaboration, as you mentioned, this season and some really beautiful experiences that our clients were able to have. So, you know, with all of the craziness that went on, now looking back on it in November, having made it sort of through it all, um, it, you know, you're, I'm really proud of my team and like my community and my mm-hmm. colleagues and all of these people who work so hard this year, like harder than anybody's ever worked. Yeah. And they all deserve some major kudos and like a really decent break like as much time as they can take. So hopefully yes. everyone will have that opportunity maybe over the holidays this year. A little bit of wellness, which is why we're the, in the we- wedding and wellness space now. So everyone, exactly. <laughs> we can kind of exactly. keep us educated on how to take care of ourselves as well. But I think that's the other part is I just wanted to make sure, you know, that people understand to have compassion because as that summer went on and you guys were working 24 hours, like there was a lot of communication that had to happen behind the scenes. And so there, there are delays and answers and things like that. And so even moving into 2022, that may happen. And if it does just always remember that there is so much happening behind the scenes that, you know, you as the client aren't necessarily dealing with. And so to really let you guys do your thing, be the professionals on the back end. And you're always there for them. Yeah. We got emails saying like, oh, you know, I've emailed so-and-so and and I haven't heard back. And it's like, yeah, like they're dying right now trying to get through things. Like it's not that they're like sitting on a beach. Yeah. Everyone was just literally trying to go day by day to get through it. Mm -hmm. And everything changed like every five seconds. Everything was different. So it was just, it was really, really hard to keep up. And, you know, having patience with those people was a really valuable um, thing. And for those who afforded Uh, their vendors that patience and that grace Mm -hmm. like really really grateful for those people like we had a number of clients who were just like listen I'm not getting married this summer if it were me I'd want all eyes and ears on my wedding as well so like Mm -hmm. let's touch base in September like right love love loved getting those messages because it meant that they really understood um, how hard we were working to make it all happen and some needed to be you know, educated on what actually was happening. And mm-hmm. some just generally had that compassion towards us. And, you know, it was really nice to see because the just, there just were not enough moments in the day to get it all done. And, um, you know, we were living real humans as well. Like at some mm-hmm. point we did have to eat and consume some water and, and shut your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, it was very few and far between, but uh, when it happened, it, it was needed. Well, maybe the next podcast I can beam you in as a hologram. <laughs> I would love to be a hologram. That would I feel be, like that would be so cool. Right? I think that might be the next step here. Now I know but, who to call. But uh, we are looking to get back into in-person. So hopefully I will be able to see you in studio uh, soon and we can have more discussions. Sounds good. Well, thanks for having me back. It was uh, nice to see you and chat with you and nice to be back on the podcast. It's been such a long time and hopefully I'll get to see you again soon. Absolutely. And for anyone listening, you can check out any of Ashley and her team's work at ashleypiggott.com or Ashley Piggott Events. And I will leave the link below. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Cheers.